from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Conga, Connect West 2018. Brought to you by Conga. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at Salesforce Dreamforce. They're saying it's 170,000 people. Take public transit. Do not bring your car. Do not take Uber. Grab a lime, grab a, grab a bird, whatever you need. So we're excited to have a practitioner. We love to get customers on. We love to talk to people that are out here actually using all these tools. And our next guest, we're excited to have Becky Bastian. She's a senior force.com developer for BD, which is Becton Dickinson. Dickinson. <laughs> Becky, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what type of products do you work on? So, I mean, primarily we're a salesforce.com platform, right? And we have a lot of add-ons with Conga, um, DocuSign, um, you name it, we're, we're doing it, Aptis, uh, CLM, and we also use Oracle CPQ. So um, anything that connects to the Salesforce.com platform, you can imagine we probably use it. And you've been developing on Salesforce for a number of years, looking at your LinkedIn, at your LinkedIn history, so you've got yeah. a lot of experience with the platform. Just a little bit of perspective, how this conference has changed, how Salesforce is a platform from just a pure play, kind of Salesforce management system, which is what it started, CRM, to what kind of it is today. Yeah, I mean, well, the conference has changed um, astronomically, obviously, over the years. When you said it was 170,000, right? It's, it's crazy. That's crazy. Um, so, logistically, it's a little tough to get around, but it's so much fun, and there's so much that you can learn here. Um, and it's just increased over the years. Like, the content has gotten better. Um, there's more focused areas, which I really like. Like, I'm a, I'm a developer at heart, so I really focus on that. Um, but as far as the platform itself, I mean, it's really grown. You can do anything with it. Uh, you know, at BD, we even have done things that are completely custom, like our, our entire implementation team for one of our business units runs um, out of salesforce.com as a project management application. So we don't just use it for sales, right, or right. marketing even. We use it across the board for, um, for implementation, and now we're getting into the service aspect as well. Right, so we're here at the Conga event, mm -hmm. um, and, and we talked before we turned the cameras on, you're using the Conga tool set in kind of a unique and slightly different way than some of the applications we've heard. I wonder if you could share some of the, the applications that you use and how you use them. Sure, so one of our primary uses of Conga is actually generating um, documents that are customer facing that really educate our, our clients, our end clients, and then it also helps us with some of the data that we're gathering um, for our product development. But what we do is we go out to the client site and we're actually sometimes in an operating room or at a, you know, a catheter injection or a um, blood draw, multiple things that we actually gather data on um, via another application called Fulcrum. We pull all that data back into Salesforce and then we use Conga to uh, generate the documents that are customer facing. So with that it really empowers our business as well because they have full control over that Conga document so they can make the changes that they need to without involving IT, and we just kind of hook it all up in the right. back end for them. Right, it's really a new kind of world in terms of the opportunity to go gather data mm -hmm. on your products, whether it's connected via an application or different things, as opposed to back in the old day, you made it, you shipped it, you sent it out to your distributor, right. and you had no idea how the end users are using it, how the doctors are using it in this case, yeah. but now you've got kind of this opportunity to do more of a closed loop feedback back into the product development. Yeah, and it's, it's not only the product development, but we're actually educating the hospitals on are you using the product to, you know, you know what we actually manufactured it for? Uh, are you using it you know, for something entirely different? Are you using it the wrong way? So it's actually an education tool back to our end customer and saying, hey, this is where you can improve you know, operating procedures, basically. Right, so another hot topic that we hear about all the time, we go to all these conferences, is bots. Mm -hmm. And you talked about, you guys are doing some interesting with bots, again, yeah. leveraging the Kong application, probably not necessarily in the way that's in the, I didn't see bots on their product, uh, yeah. on their product sheet. So tell us a little bit about that yeah. application. So we have, a, we have a bot where our sales reps can basically enter some information into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, it's kind of for a quick quote for a customer and it, the bot will crawl that spreadsheet and feed it back into Salesforce, or sorry, into SAP. What we found is that our, our uh, sales reps are having a hard time, you know, getting the right customer number, getting the right, um, you know, contact information and things like that, where the bot would fail if they didn't have the right information. So what we've done with Conga is we generate that Excel spreadsheet from salesforce.com, so the sales rep is on an opportunity and they generate the bot, they generate the spreadsheet, they fill out the rest of the information, and then it gets sent along its way and it creates the, the order in SAP eventually. So it's really, it's, um, you know, 
cutting out some human error. Right, so does the, does the bot fill in the missing data or it just, it just flags that you've got some incomplete stuff you have to uh, fill in? Yeah, so the rep is really, um, you know, we're, we're passing in as much as we can for the rep. Right. They're having to manually enter some things like what product and you know, what quantity and things like that. And then the bot crawls it and throws it into SAP. So it's just an easier way for a rep when they're sitting out on site with a client, right? They can actually put it in an Excel spreadsheet, which they love. Right. Which we, of course, we're trying to get them away from the sales spreadsheets right. anyway. Right. But let's go ahead and automate some of it for them so it cuts out that error. It's a really interesting story because right, it's, it's, it's often a battle you know, to get the salespeople to work in Salesforce as yeah. opposed to report in Salesforce. Right. So you're really kind of bridging, bridging that gap, letting them work in Excel, which not, isn't necessarily their preferred solution, yeah. But if that's what they're doing, and then integrating that back into the automated system. It's hard to change that behavior, for yes, sure. Yes, it is. But yeah, we, uh, by giving them the bot, we're actually making them go into Salesforce, it gets them more comfortable with it, and I think a way to kind of drive user adoption. Right, and, then, and I'm sure you can see kind of a future where AI mm -hmm. is going to enable more and more kind of automation of all the little bits and pieces of that process yeah, uh, going absolutely. forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, what we talked about with gathering all that data, that's one of the things with Einstein that we're really interested in especially at Dreamforce this year, is learning more about Einstein and what we can, uh, you know, what we can do on the platform with all the data that we right. have gathered. Right, So the other thing you mentioned before we turn on the cameras, it's again, a, a kind of a new technology is voice. Mm -hmm. And obviously with the proliferation of Alexa and, and Google Home right. and OK Siri and you know, all these things, voice is going to be an increasingly important way that people interact with applications. Yeah. So as you kind of look forward down, down the road, what are some of the opportunities you see there where you can start to integrate more potential voice control into the applications. I think it kind of goes back to our sales reps again, where you know they're on site. If they can, you know, talk into their phone really quickly and say, "Update this opportunity amount." Um, I mean, that's great. It gets them again into Salesforce. It's going to drive that user adoption. Uh, I saw a session on it earlier today, and I thought it was, it was pretty cool. So I think they'll be excited about that. Um, we're also implementing a field service for Lightning. Um, so we have our actual, our text to get uh, dispatched out on site. So I can really see them using that on the mobile experience as well. So, so the dispatch is going out through Lightning and then the management of the service call is also happening inside of Lightning? Yeah, so we're implementing Service Cloud right now. Uh, and the next phase will be implementing Field Service for Lightning. So we'll, we're now dispatching out of SAP, but we're looking to move it entirely to Salesforce. Wow, okay, so if Mark Benioff came in and sat down, there was a guy that looked just like his brother here earlier. <laughs> What would you ask him? What, what kind of magic wand you've been developing in this thing for, for a number of years would you say, Mark, love it, love it, but could you just give me a little of this and a little of that? I'd say, show me the roadmap and no safe harbor. Tell me it's actually <laughs> going to happen. Uh, no, I think uh, mobile is where we're always really trying to figure out where Salesforce is going, and I think they've really improved, um, but offline capability is something that has struggled. With Salesforce, we have to rely on other apps um, that write back into Salesforce. Right. And so it'd be nice to be able to eliminate those other offline applications and just use salesforce.com for that offline capturing. Because a lot of times we're at the hospital and there's no Wi-Fi, there's no connection. Right, right. So we have to have that offline capability. Still kind of the soft underbelly of, uh, of cloud-based things until, yeah. but 5G's coming. We we're just at the AT&T show right. and we'll have 5G, <laughs> 10X the speed, 100X the speed. Bring it on, So yeah. good stuff. All right, well Becky, well thanks for uh, taking a few minutes and Absolutely. Keep, uh, keep coding away. Thank you. All right, she's Becky, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at the Conga Connect West at Salesforce Dreamforce. It's a Thirsty Bear, downtown San Francisco. Come on by.